Greetings, friends. I have a Patreon now, just $2 a month, and you can help me battle my crippling anxiety. Check the link in the description to become a truly beautiful viewer. Last time on Death Mark 2. Oh, I forgot about the bugs on the backs. Uh, yeah, I got my suspicious paper bag back. Oh my god. Oh, I feel so bad for her. Oh my god. I'm gonna shoot it in the face. Wait, that was right? Uh! We should split up to make sure that at least one of us gets out of here. No, Machina, no! You should hang on to that hypocrisy so that everyone, both the living and the dead, can be saved and rest peacefully. Greetings, my beautiful viewers! I am the Hunter of Comedy, and welcome back to Death Mark 2. This is it, guys. We're gonna go confront the departed. See if we've got everything we need to save the day. Probably not. We're probably gonna die horribly. But either way, let's go find out. Music's still going! And go to the clock tower. The departed awaits. Oh, oh! I was hoping the new mu I was hoping that badass music would would go with me all the way here. Okay. The clock tower. Part of must be waiting for me inside to exchange their vows with their groom, me. Once I step inside, this case is coming to some kind of conclusion. Though there is one matter left, I need to resolve before I enter this place. That is the true identity of the Departed, who's been hiding here in Konohara Academy. We know one of them's Michiho. In the Red Wedding Hall, call the name of your bride who is hiding in the school. Reunion notice seems they want an answer. Okay. I want a time to think once I'm inside. Now is the only time I'll have to think it over. There will be crucial choices after this. Once you make your choice, you won't be able to return to the infirmary until the story progresses. You may want to collect more lost souls and sacred objects and save. Yeah, I've already done that. Okay. Let's solve the Departed's mystery. I mean, obviously Michiho is the Departed. First of all, I have some speculations about their identity. About a hundred years ago, there were brides who were brutally murdered during the wedding ceremony in M-Town, harboring grudges against the students while still longing for marriage, they were devoured by insects and mold. Their enormous grudges turned them into the departed, that much we know. Now the real question is, how did the departed hide in the school? Toshihiko Izumi said that a part of was pretending to be human. If he was telling the truth, I have a feeling they transformed into someone I know. They would want to observe their groom, me, from nearby. Hmm. People of Konohara who interacted with me. Many of them were victims in the spirit cases. Naomi Horikoshi, Shinichi Kakuta, Ritsuku Sakamoto. They're no longer here. I couldn't protect them. Once we're still alive are the headmaster, Seizo Konoe, Himiko Doryu, Haru Aki Abe, and Saki Maruhashi. And Michiho Kinokawa, whose status is unknown. Michiho died at the clock tower last night, but if she was the departed, her death would not prove her innocence. It's also a matter of things we noticed at her dorm room. Something's clearly odd about that room. Exactly. Safe to say Michiko is a prime suspect. Let's start deducing now. Assuming the departed is among the ones still alive, we can we can exclude Mr. Konoe and Abe. The departed is said to be a bride, and the ones who hold grudges are female. 
So the same reason they transform into a girl. This is still conjecture, obviously. But without solid evidence, I'm gonna have to make assumptions to narrow down the suspects to the most likely candidates. What about Maruhashi? I didn't meet her until Mr. Kokori's case. For that, the departed attacked both I and Sho after learning about my friendship with them. Maruhashi didn't know they were my friends, so the chances of her being the departed are slim. Doryu is rather suspicious. She is. Now, I mean, like, she... Like, both she and Michiho were quote-unquote cursed at the same time, yet she is still here and Michiho, like, isn't. Together with Michiho, she's been helping me from the very beginning. Additionally, she knows all about the case and is really interested in me. Oh, that's true. We can assume Himiko Doryu is a suspect. This is just a possibility, but... If Michiho or Doryu are the departed... Their smiles when they called my name, and when they told me they believed in me... It all came from the dead. That reality would be a bitter pill to swallow. However, there's still another possibility. That's the fact that Izumi might not have been telling the truth. That's the point. Izumi was going insane at the time. Yes, but technically when you're about to die, you tend to be truthful. As the Joker in The Dark Knight once said, when people are in their final moments, they show you who they really are. He might not have intended to lie, though that's not to say that he didn't lie either. If we consider that possibility, female doll would seem suspicious. We were eaten by Mushikabi. The last words match the ritual scene I saw in my mind. Especially because the word we could refer to the two brides. But then who would the departed be then? Because then that would mean that the departed, like, if they are the two brides, then who would the departed be? Because would the Mushi, because the Mushikabi themselves, like they're looking for brides, they're not brides themselves, so that doesn't make sense. Two souls with the same resentment turned into a single spirit, and that spirit is the departed. That possibility is there. We could assume the female doll is also a suspect. Unlike a detective novel or a police drama. I'm not going to turn up definitive evidence in a spirit case like this. Despite that, I still have to make a choice. Among the three likely candidates, which is the departed? I can't afford to make a mistake. Michio Kinokawa is... She's definitely the departed. I believe in that. Himiko Doryu is... <sighs> I'm going to go with my gut. My gut tells me that she is because she, like Michiho, blamed the doll. But I haven't gotten any sort of resentment from the doll, so I'm going to say yes. Female doll... I've, I've said it from the beginning. I don't think they are the departed. Which means that those two girls are the departed. If I'm wrong, then I'm fucked. It's my final decision. I know my answer. Time to go to the clock tower. Everything will be clear there. Whether I like it or not. Yep, it's unlocked. The party is waiting for me up ahead. I can't imagine what will happen next. Okay. I push open the door.
Hmm. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Whoa! That's a hand! What in the world? There are red handprints all over the wall. It's red mold, not blood. Same type of mold as on the notices. Tower wasn't like this before. Clock tower has changed. This is also the work of the departed? What is this dreadful sensation filling the air? The power of the curse is overwhelming. I have to put an end to it quickly. One arm shaped a uh, clump of red molds emerging from the wall. Oh my god. Wait. It said one and then two and then the two and the four were upside down. Oh, I see. Upside down! I get it! Chris is beginning to eat in my body. Okay, I got it, I've got it, I've got it. And then this is upside down, so we go back down. And that's three, so that's up. And that's four, so that's down. The doll! Something's lying on the floor. This is... The broken remains of the female doll. How? What happened? With the pain from the curse and the agitation from the surprise, my head's about to burst. Calm down. Just calm your ass down. So I say to myself over and over again, that I inspect the broken doll. Her limbs are missing, only her head, dress, and some broken pieces remain. I look closer, see something resembling teeth marks. Most likely from a bite. Was she devoured by the departed? <gasps> That's who they devoured. They devoured the spirits um, that were in the doll. Part of grew stronger after devouring the doll, which turned the lights in the special building red. Makes sense. Hear a faint voice. This the doll's voice? Take me. Take me? What do you want to say? Eat me? Protect you from red curse. Her voice goes silent. What did the doll say? Take me, eat me to protect you from the red curse. Still don't get it, however... Stahl mustered all her remaining strength just to say that to me, so I can't ignore her words. Better take her corpse with me. The malicious dis uh, disturbance that's happening in the place has subsided. Makes you feel a little better. Is this thanks to the doll? Can I go up? Oh, I can. Climb the ladder once again. Where will the ladder take me this time? Will I end up climbing the clock tower for all eternity without an exit? Mine conjures up numerous ominous predictions like this, one after another. Except, I know that can't be how this ends. What the departed wants is a wedding ceremony. 
and a groom is needed for that to happen. I guess this ladder is a vertical wedding aisle. And waiting for me at the end will be my bride. Well, time to see if I was right that it was the girls. <gasps> it's the altar! The one that the girls talked about! Found myself in a bright red room. Stone walls and floors are covered with red mold. There are strange plants growing on the floors that look like overgrown moss. A sight that you'll never see in nature. Did the departed cause this paranormal phenomenon? There's an altar in the middle of the room. It's an altar that would be the center of a western-style wedding. Hmm. This would be the end of my walk down the aisle, then. I take the notice out and check it. In the Red Wedding Hall, call the name of your bride who's hiding in the school. Okay. This must play this must be the Red Wedding Hall. And I should call the name uh there's called called the departed by name. They've been hiding uh the by the name been using at the school. Right, the very name I have guessed. Wonder if there's a reason they want me to call them by their name here. Perhaps the departed wishes to have a groom that really knows every single thing about his bride. Hmm. Everything. Even their terrifying secrets. The departed who's been hiding in Konohara Academy. Your real name is... Michiho Kinukawa and Himeko Doryu. A voice echoes throughout the room. There's no answer at all. Only the heavy silence filling the air. Oh, fuck! Did I get it wrong? I expected nothing less of you, my dear husband. I believed in you. Oh, God! <gasps> I was right! Two people appear before my eyes. So, the departed didn't just kill one of them... When they found the doll, it it killed both of them and took both their forms. Ah, that way they could easily draw suspicion away. Makes sense. Doryu, Michiho. I was hoping I was wrong. However, my guess was on the mark. The death mark! Ha ha! Roll credits. Dear husband... We've been watching you, while hiding in the school the whole time. Dear husband, we've tested you to see if you're worthy of being our real husband or not. Both of them sound dead. Their eyes are lifeless. They don't look like Doryu and Michiho I came to know. The two of you are. The Departed's Brides. Mayamura, the Mayamura sisters, Mikiko and Michio Mayamura. Right. Sisters were the key to unlocking the truth. The Departed wasn't just one entity hiding in the school, it was two. That makes sense! I had proof that Michiho was the Departed, which meant the person who received the curse at the same time would also be the Departed. Doryu, bearing that mark on her face, is displaying the evidence that she's indeed the Departed as well. Then, are you the ones who cause all those spirits to appear? That is correct. So the spirit I saw clinging to Doryu's back was fake. The groom only needs his bride. The bride only needs her groom. Everyone else is unnecessary. If you're allowed to keep using the dead to cause more casualties, the damage will be incalculable as their victims become new spirits. More and more people will die until the bride and groom are all that remain. That's the ending the departed desires. I have to stop their twisted madness at any cost. Dear husband, you have shown us your brilliant intelligence. 
You managed to learn the truth about us without being deceived by sympathy or fake deaths. Dear husband, you've shown us your impeccable lineage. Due to your bloodline, you were able to see, hear, and face the spirits. Dear husband, you have shown us your stunning personality. Having formed an emotional bond with us brides, you mustered up the courage to push through your fear for us. You're not like those weak, fragile, beheaded men, or the coward who fled from the notice. You're different from those fake grooms. Dear heavens, you truly are our real husband. What are you going to do to me? We are the departed's bride and groom. Let us exchange our vows in this red wedding hall and spend our days in the Mushikabi chamber forever after. That is the happy ending we long for. But Mikiko, dear husband looks delicious. I can't control myself anymore. Dear husband, can I bite you? Ichiho's face changes before my eyes. How terrifying. Is this the departed's true form? I want to bite. I want to bite husband. Every time she speaks, the insects coming out of her, her mouth move their legs. Ah! What is that black liquid dripping from her mouth? Is that her saliva? Does she see me as food? That would make sense. She was talking about, like, you know, praying mantises devouring their mates and shit. I'm completely disoriented. My mind can't process everything before me. I feel like the last thin uh, thread of my sanity is going to snap. Do not rush, Michio. We must exchange vows first. Days, weeks, and months from now, our husband's Mari shall be dyed in Mushikabi's color. His organs shall be infested with mold, and he'll be filled with insects making him beautiful. We need to wait until that time, all right? Wanna bite! Bite! What a troublesome child. <laughs> Dear husband, you are a bad man because you really do look delicious. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah, the mark on her face starts spreading like mold, distorting her face. Ugh. Is that, uh, unsightly look on her face supposed to be joy? I'm quaking in fear just looking at her. I can't even muster a scream. Want to bite? 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 They can no longer control their ravenous hunger. Oh my god! Well, I mean, they marinated me for a very long time! The figures of the two brides who waited for a wedding are no longer here. Instead, what I'm seeing are two long-dead spirits who were warped by madness. Mikiko! Shall we bite him together? Ichio! Let us bite him together! You know, you asked for consent and I didn't give it. I didn't give it. I remember I was very impressed about that at the very beginning. You 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 asked for consent, and now you're just ignoring it. This is um, you know, this is a sign of a bad relationship. I don't think this is gonna work out.
Doryu and Michio look at each other. Then they hug one another. Oh no! Arms and legs intertwined, bodies pressed against body, sticking like glue. Oh! After repeating the same motion several times. Yep, yep! The boundary between the two disappears and they unite into one. What's it look like now after it ate the doll? Look, dear husband. Look at us. We have consumed the scar and let Marionette. Wait, hold on. If they are the spirits of the girls, who was in the doll? What spirit is the we in the doll? Oh no! Oh no! Oh lord! Oh no! Oh what? Oh no! Hi! Fuck! When a candlestick relight. Dear husband, am I beautiful now? No! Not at all! You have another person coming out of your vagina! My mind and body are overwhelmed by fear, like I'm a toad being hypnotized by a serpent! The departed had gained a new form from swirling red mold a grotesque looking demon is coming out of a doll's bulging belly i can feel her intense emotion as her four eyes stare at me uh! and that emotion is desire oh i'm sure it is the scarlet desire to devour their husband and thus you're in their demise can i is it even possible to save them Dear husband, let me bathe all of you in the color of insects! Ah! Ow! Flood of insects issue force from their mouth and assault me. This keeps up all I'm eaten alive by the bugs! Can't give up, what should I do? Alright, suspense act! The final one! Final boss time, ladies and gentlemen! And those of unspecified genders as well! Liquid bleach? No, no, no! Insects! Frog! Frog! Take it, you bitch! I hold the dry frog to cover myself from the attacking bugs. And this we got from Michio's room. It's like Michio is trying to protect us! Yes! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Success! Hold the dry frog in front of me. The moment I lay my hand on the frog. I remember what the voice told me earlier. Frogs drive away bugs. Might work then. The party steers as the insects pour forth an attack. Then the insects disperse into the darkness, avoiding the frog! Looks like this is the right choice! The departed shrieks in anger upon seeing the insects leave. They seem to be muttering something. What the heck are they saying? Bugs? No, is this mold? Just as they think to myself, a sharp pain runs throughout my arm. Ah, mold! So that is mold. No, they're going with mold, huh? I can feel the mold uh, spreading throughout my body. I feel like vomiting. Dear husband, let me bathe you in the color of mold. 
They're consumed by mold at this rate. No time to sit around. Act two. I think I already saw what I need. I need to do something about the mold that covers my whole body. Except I don't have an idea of what I need to do. Let's believe there are clues somewhere because if I don't do anything, I'll be dead. Okay, I was thinking the bleach, but now the doll's head. Eat a little bit of it. Right, because she did say to eat, eat it to protect me from the mold. Grabbing the female doll head, I try eating a piece of it. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Success! The moment I lay my hand on the doll's broken remains. I remember what the voice said at the time. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. Yeah, the doll! I wonder if maybe the doll is somehow representative of Doryu. Because, I, I say that because, um, like, you know, we, go, we got, like, you know, the, um, the frog from Michiho, and maybe the doll is supposed to represent Doryu somehow? I don't know. It's an unpleasant sensation, like I'm chewing on a stone. Then, a clay texture and taste start to spread inside my mouth. Making up my mind, I swallow it down! At that moment... Yeah! The mold and the unpleasant nausea disappear in an instant. Looks like this was the right choice. Ah! The departed sounds uh, distraught after seeing both the insects and mold cleared away. Oh no! No, 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 you don't need to get closer. You absolutely do not need to get closer with your giant vagina doll face. They let out a roar and approach me. Are they gonna eat me now? Can I bite you? My beloved husband. Let me bite you. Here we go again. The department won't be satisfied until they kill me. Although... If the, uh, Mayumura sisters are the departed, do they really want my death? The Mayumura sisters longed for a blissful marriage. Tell me, this bloody ritual can't be the dream wedding that you always wanted. What is it you really want? Dear husband. Is that their answer? They sound sad. They want a husband. At that moment, I hear something distant from the darkness surrounding my vision. Give it back? That voice just now. If I give it back, do you mean... <laughs> Shit, it's not working, huh? Pretty sure the voice just now was the departed's true feelings. They return to their mad monster form. Oh, bite, 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 bite. Guess you really can't communicate with the spirit, huh? At least I got a clue now. Might be able to save the departed soul using that clue. Act three, okay. There's something I need to give back to them. Probably something they used in celebration. Given that this is a wedding. Hmm. Okay, it says it's as gorgeous at a, as a wedding dress. The two grooms shall present their brides with red threads and smear lipstick on their teeth. Maybe that has something to do with it? Smear the Departed's teeth. Okay, I'm gonna try this because that said that like, I think that was like a, a style of proposing. And what they really want is to be loved, right? No, I failed! Panicking, I can't get it open. 
thing that was stolen from them is probably the thing they want back. Okay. A uh, wedding is an occasion where the bride is celebrated. What should I do as the groom? I'm gonna try this again, see if I get it right. If it's wrong, then I'll try the crimson uh, thing. I try to apply it to the departed's teeth. SUCCESS! Deep in my finger and the vermilion ink, I call out to the departed. Come closer. Let me paint your teeth red. Dear husband! They wail and insects come pouring out of their body. Is that wrong? I think it was wrong. Immediately hold up the dry frog to repel the insects, though the frog ends up damaged. And you step closer to paint the vermilion ink on the departed, but I also don't want to go near them. They're gonna come up with a different plan. That was not the right choice. Damn it. Okay. Maybe I need to present it, the, the, the wedding dress carefully, maybe? Okay. Success! I get down on my knees and offer it to the departed. I shall give you this dress. Vermilion thread! Give! I was right, okay. I forgot about the thread part. I read the part about that. I thought about giving it to them, but I was like, no, no, that doesn't feel right, because it's supposed to be like a white thing. But I guess in this... Did they tell me to give them the vermilion thread? Pretty sure this dress is made of red silk thread. Should fit the bill. Is that the standard custom during a real wedding? Is this the celebration you want? The party stares at me in silence. They seem somewhat bewildered. Guess this is evidence I stirred something in their heart. That was the right choice! Good! The party takes a slow, deep breath. I supported longs to experience a traditional M-Town wedding ceremony. Remember the true vows you long for. The departed starts breathing heavily. Did that trigger a memory or something? They let out a roar as they approach me. Can I bite you? Yeah, more biting, okay? No, thank you. Guess that's not it. Party's gone insane again. They're on the verge of devouring me. No way I can give up here! I think, damn, there's gotta be something I can do. I think it is. I think now is the time! Act 4! I didn't know there was an Act 4! They wanted a traditional wedding. Groom gives something to their bride. But still not enough. What else should I do? There we go. Come on! Come on, I'm running out of time here! Come on, come on, come on, come on! SUCCESS! I dip my finger in the vermilion ink and I call out to the departed. Let us exchange our wedding vows. Let me paint your teeth red. <laughs> Dear husband. I feel like the departed isn't as deranged as they were before. Now's that time. I nervously extend the fingers I coated with the vermilion ink toward the departed. That's what's written in the chief priest's note I found at the Mushikabi Shrine. At wedding ceremonies in M-Town, the groom is supposed to give the bride vermilion thread and paint their teeth red. All M-Town brides were overjoyed to be on the receiving end of this traditional practice. Using what I got, a dress made with red silk uh, would uh, equate to giving the bride vermilion thread and smearing red on their teeth aligns with painting their teeth red with lipstick. So, so, I were to, so if I were to do that now, I gently smear the vermilion ink on the departed teeth, giving them a blessing. The departed... This is the blessing that I, your groom, give to you. My bride!
After a long silence, their lips curve into a smile. Then... Dear husband, for so long... For so, so long... For... You... After muttering such a thing... We purified them. The departed disappears with a cry that's oddly neither filled with love nor hate. Looks like this is the right choice. This should be good. Or is it? The departed regained their lost blessing so they can finally rest in peace? Really hope that's the case, however. Cold wind refuses to stop blowing through a gaping hole in my heart. Doryu. Michiho. Yeah. For a while, I simply stand rooted to this spot, stunned and distraught. Then I think about the way those girls simply disappeared without regaining their consciousness. I remember the look on their faces when that happened. They were smiling for some reason. Time to go. Now that I've managed to survive this ordeal somehow, there are some things that I must do. Apparently this is the normal ending. As I descend, I notice that the red handprints on the walls have vanished. I assume that the other strange phenomena has ceased after the departed's departure. Clock tower's frozen in time. Bet the hands won't move ever again. Because the two students who wanted to make that happen for the school's 70th anniversary are no longer with us. Yeah, it looks like... Michiho and Doryu were dead long before I got here. Better get out of here. Yasuoka's waiting for me. The Departed's ending. Okay. Mikiko, Mayamura, and Michio. Okay. I should let Yasuoka know how this case ended. Welcome back, Yashiki. Spirit that was possessing Yasuoka is uh, gone now, and the light in the infirmary is no longer red. Is it over? Yeah. You did well. Where's Doryu? Yashiki. Yasuoka looks at me with gentle eyes. She then falls with a slight knowing nod. Things happened, I see. Just tell me whenever you're ready. No rush. I'm sorry. Hmm? Want me to answer that? No, nah, it's fine. I'll do it. Hello? <gasps> Trying to be more... Try being more cheery, will ya? <gasps> yes! And no tone of those harsh words! You're alive, Machida! Yep, I failed to die. <laughs> yeah! Machida lived! Fuck yeah! I love you, Machida! I lost my phone, so I couldn't call. It took me a while to find a working payphone. Thank God you managed to escape. I was sprinting through that damn forest so hard it made me want to puke the whole time. They almost caught my ass several times, but lucky for me, they disappeared midway through the chase. They probably decided to go be with their husband rather than playing tag with me. 
How did it go on your end? Ugh. It's over. The departed has vanished. Oh, okay then. Did you save the departed? I think so. I think I did. Why do you sound like you're at a funeral? Perk the fuck up, man. Mission accomplished. You should be proud of yourself. Nobody thinks you're cruel for doing what needed to be done. Sorry, I'm just not in the mood for that. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. I'm heading there now. Give me the details once I'm there. Bye. Yeah, Machina lived! Machina survived! Fuck yes! That was Machita, wasn't it? I'm glad he's safe and sound. He said he's coming here. Shall we leave once he arrives, then? You should rest, Yashiki. I'll contact the headmaster for you. Thanks, Yasuoka. I'm touched by Yasuoka's thoughtfulness. Since the last scene is still so vivid, vivid in my mind, I don't think I can deliver a professional report to the headmaster right now. By the way, Yashiki, why are you holding on to that? Oh, you mean this? I haven't even realized it, but I'm clutching something I picked up in the clock tower. It's a female doll's head and dress. They saved my life. There's no particular reason. Maybe I'm just feeling sentimental. Hmm. あ。とすれば愛人を取り巻く一連の怪人を終わりを告げる金なのかもしれない。だが、これで全てが終わりではない。仮にも怪異化を名乗るとすれば、魂の想念に触れたものとしてそれぞれの死をさらに深く見つめなくてはならない。
what it takes to get the good ending and see if it's uh, something I can do in this episode or not. So I'll be right back. Oh, do you want to do credit for our backers? Oh, all the people who backed the game. Oh, oh my God, there's so many. Okay, a week has passed since that night. Konoe Hara Academy hasn't changed much since my first visit. Though this is still the only calm before the storm, even though the spirit has vanished, the truth and the havoc they wrought still remain. Weekly magazines and the like have been littering the articles about mysterious appearances uh, at an eight-city school. It's only a matter of time before the press descends upon the school. When that happens, students will lose their normality once again. There's nothing I can do about that. I walk past the students and enter the school. Unlike my first visit, the bell doesn't ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, Yashiki. Apologies, I've been, uh, quite busy lately. I've had my hands full with parents and police asking for explanations about the students who have disappeared. Although all I can do is tell them I don't know anything more than they do. And so I get called an irresponsible headmaster. Ha <laughs> ha! Mm, quite a few people have gone missing in a short amount of time. And yet, we can't share what actually transpired. Being thrust into the limbo between reality and the spirit world's been a pretty tough situation. Sooner or later... I'll likely have to resign. Someone will be made to bear responsibility for these incidents. I've got no regrets, though. The case is solved. I can hold my head high knowing what happened. Mr. Conaway, I read your report. I feel absolutely terrible for Sakamoto. I can't believe Dorio and Kinokawa were actually the departed. I have no intention of revealing the truth. It's not like that would allay the concerns of anyone. We shall consider them to be missing persons like Sakamoto and the others. I should be fine. The real versions of them are victims too. Actually, I was curious as to why the departed pretended to be Dorio and Kinukawa in order to hide among the students doesn't seem to be a need to mingle with everyone here in order to simply find a husband. I don't know either. There are a number of things concerning the departed that still don't make any sense to me. Such as, why were they in the clock tower? Hmm. Maybe you'll get a bit of closure about that matter if you read this. Proceeds to hand me a leather uh, journal from the nearby desk. This journal belonged to my grandfather, the first headmaster of Konoehara Academy. A relative found it at their home and sent it my way. I know now it isn't exactly the ideal time for you to see this, but feel free to take your time looking it over. Thanks, I'll be borrowing this then. I guess that's all from me. But let me thank you one last time. I appreciate all your help, Yashiki. You helped me save Konoehara Academy. I also wanted to extend my sincere apologies for being harsh with you. Uh, no, don't worry about that. I know you were desperate to save the school and the students. I'm glad you understand. That reminds me, Daimon will be here today. Why don't you go talk to him? Sure thing. Say goodbye to Mr. Conaway and leave the faculty room. Oh, and Daimon's been waiting in the infirmary. Long time no see, Yashiki. How are you feeling, Daimon? I think resting in that hospital bed actually did me some good. I'm feeling better. Well, 
better is relative for me. <coughs> he still got that lingering cough, but his voice is full of life. Seems like he's fully recovered. That's good. Sorry I had to abandon you midway. I ended up forcing everything on you. All the responsibility and emotional trauma. Many people died because of this case. It's a bit sad and lonely knowing no one will ever learn the truth besides those of us who were involved. True. Let us remember those who died, at the very least. It's a cross that all of us who were involved in the incident will have to bear. Nevertheless, we live on, believing that we will save someone else another day. It's a remark Daimon said during Hanako's case. The suffering of a doctor who constantly has to face the grim reality of death. Despite that, he's still determined to save others. I comprehend the weight of those words a bit more now. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Having the spirit doctor tell me that made me feel blessed to be a doctor. Say, Yashiki, I hope you keep pushing ahead in your own way. Despite all the struggles that come, there's got to be someone out there who's just waiting for you to extend your hand. Finish my conversation with Daimon and say my goodbyes and leave the infirmary. Then I head straight out of school. Found myself at the front gate. School's been over for a while, so there are a few students milling about. Oh, Yashiki! Hi! <gasps> Hello! What are you doing here, I? Daimon told me you'd be here today. Looks like I almost missed you, huh? It's all because Sho keeps slowing me down. Sho's here! Fuck yeah! Oh, shut up with your bullshit. You're the one at fault here. What's the point in making me dress like this, even though the case is over? The case is over, but we're gonna stick out like a sore thumb if we wear casual clothes to a school. Plus, this is another chance to wear the Konohara Academy uniform! You look good in that blazer show! Yikes, stop it, you're giving me the chills. I would have passed if I'd have known it'd be like this. Yeah, totally. I worked seven days straight and finally got a day off, just to lay on the couch and drink. <laughs> both of you complain way too much. Looks like I invited both of them here. Feels like it's been an eternity since we all saw each other last. I asked... I asked some of the others too, but apparently they already had plans today. Glad to see you're doing well, old man. Cause you look like a zombie when we were on that case. That's so. Got some bags under your eyes though, you've been staying up late. Oh, you mean this? I've been doing some work at home. Sometimes I get too caught up in my work, and by the time I realize it, the sun's creeping through the blinds. You still living that kind of life even after the case? <laughs> you're one hell of a night owl. Rest is just as important as work, Yashiki. Should we go and grab something good to eat? I like that idea. I know a good ramen shop. They pile on the pork and green onions. Why ramen? Cake is much better, right, Yashiki? No, I... You don't have to work today, right, Yashiki? You're gonna collapse if you don't take a breather once in a while. And you're not good at that. Fine. <laughs> They're forcibly taking me out. In the end, I let myself be dragged to both a rum place and a cake shop. I and Sho are as bubbly as ever, while Hiro chimes in occasionally with sardonic comments. Observing the scene in front of me, feels like this is the first time I've been able to have a normal, ordinary day in quite a while. However, 
There's a strange feeling I can't quite shake, as if I'm walking around in shoes that don't fit. Guess this is what readapting to mundane life feels like. Huh. <sighs> Guess I'm just too used to having dark, unnatural forces inverting themselves in my life. I skimmed through the first headmaster's journal that Mr. Conaway loaned me. Stuff written inside is related to the female doll and the departed. The first headmaster knew about M-Town's uh, horrific ritual, the departed's wedding. He apparently learned about it from a former M-Town resident. He wanted to offer condolences to the victims of the ritual and those who were claimed by the Departed's wrath. He particularly pitied the Mayamura sisters, whose dreams of a happy marriage were betrayed. Inside the clock tower that was built to celebrate Konohehara's 10th anniversary, he built a room as a memorial service, complete with an altar where he offered a western doll. That doll was the female doll in the scarlet dress. He got it for someone who dealt in spiritual items. He said the female doll was made to be an offering for a pitiful soul and had hidden spiritual power. Learning about that, the headmaster believed the doll could soothe the souls of the Mayamura sisters. He then dressed the doll in a beautiful bridal gown. In his mind, he was being thoughtful to the sisters, who had their matrimonial wishes twisted into a grotesque ritual. His love for antique things was probably what led him to choose the red dress over the now traditional white gown. The first headmaster may have thought he was helping, but romanticizing the tragedy of the two brides eventually led to this disaster. The deep-seated grudge of the Mayamura sisters remained in the Konohehara area. And the grudge began dwelling inside the female doll. Eventually, the departed was born. And that's where the journal ends. First headmaster passed away after that. Probably the first victim of them trying to, like, make a, uh, a husband, I guess. Or maybe Doryu and, and uh, uh, Michiho did accidentally unseal it. Who knows? Perhaps the Departed's curse killed him as well. He set the events in motion and then, 60 years later, the Departed appeared at Konohehara Academy. No one can ever truly know how or why such things occur. We can only imagine and speculate. After the first headmaster's death, the female doll disappeared. It was taken from the clock tower, or at least uh, the part normal people could uh, access. The place the doll ended up must have been the Red Room, somewhere only the departed could access. They were awaiting a new vessel other than the doll. One in which they could make their dream of a happy marriage come true. The replacement finally came after so many years. One summer break, two female students visited the clock tower. The students were the real Michiho Kinukawa and Himeko Doryu. They were there for the clock tower renovation project to commemorate the school's 70th anniversary. The bard brought them to the altar room and... Yeah. They killed them using the curse of insects and mold, claiming their bodies and memories. The older sister, Mikiko Mayumura, became Himiko Doryu, and the younger sister, 
Michio turned into Michiho Kinukawa. They then hid in the school, attempting to find a husband that was suitable to fulfill their wish for a happy marriage. The rest is history. The departed used other spirits and notices as tests for their groom candidates. The Doryu and Michiho I had come to know were fakes. Everything was an act. Despite that, both of them looked and acted far too human. Their warm words, their gentle smiles and innocence. Did they really need to go so far to test me if I was worthy of marriage? Why did they do all that? Who knows? It's just a hunch. Maybe when the departed stole Doryu and Michiho's memories. Might have noticed that there were other ways to satisfy their deep, unrealized wishes. Doryu called that possibility love. The departed spent their days in the school trying to stay near their husband, having conversations and swapping smiles like any other youths. Born in a feudal town a hundred years ago, maybe they never had an opportunity to experience that before. As a result, their love for their husband grew. Hmm, this would have been something that they truly treasured. It might have been how they could act so natural, protecting that glittering youth. Who knows, maybe they even wish they could just continue living in that way. Except they were spirits. They couldn't escape their sanguinolent fate. In order to fulfill their desire for marriage, they ended up choosing the spirit's path. Perhaps it was the only way they knew to get what they craved. Dear husband, for so, so long, for so, so long, for you. Yeah. I wonder what the departed was trying to say at that time. Did it have something to do with love? Even their intense resentment disappeared just by imitating M Town's traditional wedding. Was that also because of their love? If that's true, my strange life as a teacher and the time I spent with them was not so in vain. Because that way, the memories we made together are what ended up saving those girls. The Departed. A terrifying spirit that killed a lot of people in the last two months. Though considering their grudges and wishes, they were also poor victims themselves. The terror and sadness that filled them. After learning both sides of the coin, I want to forgive the departed. I reached for my cup after that. Chugging down the liquid inside, I get up from my seat and check the time. The day's already changed. Late at night, <laughs> guess it's time. Time to start working. Head to my room on the second floor, and then... Alright, all done. He's reassembling the doll. I finally managed to fix it. I was able to use the techniques I learned at the workshop I found when looking up information about doll care. Though it's fixed, her soul won't come back. This female doll saved my life. The departed's grudges moved from this doll to Doryu and Michiho. So who was the spirit inhabiting the doll? That is the question. I still don't know about that. I'm guessing it'll probably be revealed in the true uh, ending. 
I have a hunch. It may have been the souls of the real Michiho and Doryu. So then maybe they didn't die. Their souls were put into the doll? And it just took their bodies? Maybe, I don't know. Those two girls were brimming with spiritual energy, which is likely why the departed chose to claim their bodies. I have a hunch their souls dwelled inside the doll after they were killed. The way the doll's appearance changed as the departed transformed might be evidence that the girls' souls were still connected to their bodies. So the doll was wandering around the school without their memories, not knowing what to do. Besides being in that confused state, their fear and resentment of the departed still remained. That's why they helped me. Still, what's the point of fixing this doll? Not like it'll speak again if it's mended. Plus, even if it were to talk, what useful information would it possibly have for me? Yeah. I mean, Mary is still sealed up somewhere from the first game. I still think a fucking great thing that could happen in a sequel would be like, if at one point in the story, they have no choice but to unseal Mary because they need her help for some reason. Like, like they, they find a way to like limit her like ability and everything so that basically all she can do is talk. I would think that that would be a really interesting thing of like, I, I don't know, like, I just thought it'd be really fucking cool if like Mary like came back in a different way, but you know. As far as I know, the souls contained inside this doll belong to the actual Michiho and Doryu, not the fake versions who considered me their teacher. Hmm. It's a pointless undertaking, and I have a feeling it'll only make me feel emptier inside. So why do I keep doing this? Guess it's a form of prayer. It won't change anything. Though, I also believe that it isn't for nothing. I believe some souls will be saved if I do this. Hang on a little longer, you two. Spirit Hunter and Spirit Doctor persevered to the good ending. Okay. Okay, so I'm back to get the bad ending. Uh, Michiho and the female doll are the departed, but not Doryu. Yep, let's see what happens. Ah, okay, so I didn't trust the doll because I believed that the the that the doll was bad. So I don't have the means to save myself in the final battle against the departed. Okay. Oh, room's filling with molds, hard to breathe. Yep, this is the bad ending. Good lord. You did not get it. Oh no! No! I was wrong! I believed in you! <laughs> what a shame, dear husband. Oh no. I hear a voice from behind me. And when I turn around... You are not my real husband. I thought so. Still, I love you. Let us exchange a brief vow. Can I 
bite you! Oh joy. Yeah, he's eating me. Oh god! Yep, yep, that's a bad end. That's definitely a bad end. Well, I mean, we've already seen the good ending, so, yeah. Moving on to our next story. Huh. <laughs> Just end. Okay. Departed. Reached the bad ending. I got all the trophy. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, so we are now going to go for the uh, true ending of the game, which requires us to load chapter six. You can guarantee your success during Suspense Act. Say your success in to 100? Yeah, I already know what I'm doing. I can change my allies' fate. Yes. They're all alive. Oh! She's been changed to dead! Okay, good. Yeah, she's alive. Okay, good. They're all alive. Okay, so... Apparently for the true ending, we have to try and convince Sakamoto um, that we're not trying to do anything weird with Doryu or um, Michio. Hold on, there's a reason why both of them are defending me. Among all the teachers, I'm the only one who's taking their concerns seriously and pursuing the departed. This departed nonsense again, really? You really think you have carte blanche to do anything you want because you're investigating the departed? Takai, Izumi, Horikoshi, and Kakuta. Four Konohehara students have mysteriously disappeared in a short period of time. I'm sure you realize how unnatural that looks, don't you? That... I'm not asking you to believe in spirits. But you need to understand that I'm the only adult here who's trying to do something about these students' disappearances. Mr. Yashiki... And they're just trying to help me. They want to bring peace and normality back to the school. And they're trying to help in whatever way they can. That's all that's going on. So Komodo leaves the faculty room without saying anything. Okay. Now apparently we go all the way to the end of this chapter now. And we do a... Uh, we... Do everything non-violently. Apparently, I, I fucked up before, like, you know, when I beat Michiho to death because I threw the wrench at her in the first place. Apparently, we were not supposed to do that. You know, I figured we would actually learn more about um, Abe, but we didn't. So, yeah, that's honestly, that's a bit disappointing, personally. Right, I forgot. I got a call from Miss Sakamoto earlier. Oh. Did you get scolded again? No, the opposite. She apologized because she felt like she went too far about the stuff with you. Oh. Is it because of what I said to her? I'm very kind of her to take immediate action after she changed her mind. Isn't that great, Mr. Yashiki? She won't be picking on you anymore. I hope that's true. How's your investigation going, by the way? Did you learn anything new? Not a lot, but... Okay. So apparently... That changes Sakamoto's fate. Ah, so Sakamoto... She didn't die in this version. She came today, but she had to leave because she felt under the weather. Her face is really pale, and even standing upright seemed to cause her an immense amount of pain. Look, she must have been possessed by a spirit as well. 
While Mr. Konoe and the students don't look so good, they don't seem to be suffering as much as uh, Sakamoto. Maybe the spirits are affecting everyone differently? Goodness, maybe that malicious disease is spreading on our campus. Our school really is cursed. Well, yes. It looks like with that, Sakamoto will live because she didn't disappear. Okay, so yeah, so the, the whole thing with Sakamoto didn't happen. Okay, cool. That means she lived. Hmm? Okay, so yeah, now in true ending territory. Okay. What? What is this? I hear the sound of a bell. But why? That a party should be gone. What should I do? Uh, let's return to the clock tower. Don't tell me. Are they calling me? When I return to the clock tower, the bell stops ringing. The departed's ending. Something strange on the first floor. Maybe it's coming from upstairs? Oh! You hear the sound of someone on the ladder coming from above. Someone's climbing down from the third floor to the second. Oh God! Give me a break! This should be over already! Sound then moves to the first floor. What comes down from above is... No way! You gotta be kidding me! Himiko Doryu. Michiho Kinukawa. Can't be. The departed soul should have been saved. Both of you shouldn't be here. Um. Who are you? Oh! Oh, is it the real them? After that... I'll bring the two confused girls back to the infirmary. And then... Together with Yasu, Oka, and Mashida, who survived being attacked by the departed, I asked the girls what happened. It's an informative conversation. They're the real Doryu and Michiho, not the departed. Neither of them know how they ended up in the clock tower. The memory stopped in August, when their bodies were stolen by the departed. In short, to both of them, we're complete strangers. This is the first time we've ever met. Oh. After a while, Mr. Godaway finally arrives! Seems pretty confused after hearing about the situation. When he discovers the students are alive, a gentle, relieved smile widens across his face. He closes my hand and profusely thanks me over and over again. I ask Mr. Konoe to take care of Doryu and Michiho, and then I leave the infirmary. I wonder if they're gonna, like, have, like, the white hair and the mark on their face forever. I mean, like, I was... I was positive it was still the departed because they still had the marks and everything. Maybe that's just a red herring. Both of them seem like they're genuinely the real girls, however. Why do they still have the mark and the white hair? That's a good question. I mentioned it to Yasuoka and Mishida as we're heading out. Oh, really? I didn't see it, though. I doubt they can see it. Yasuoka thinks for a moment. Both of them have been controlled by the departed for a long time. Wouldn't be surprised if traces of the departed remain on their bodies. I don't like the sound of that at all. Is there anything I can do? Mm, let's see. 
I guess you should probably not talk to them. Huh? If the departed really was saved, the mark and white hair will eventually disappear. But if they meet you, the departed's remnants might stir again. Nothing good will come of that. That's true. Your best course of action would be not to meet them. Do you understand? Uh, I kind of want to talk to them, though. But I do understand. Yeah, it's for the best. Thank you, Yashiki. This case is over. There's no need for you to talk to them again. <laughs> Besides, it's not like they know you, either. That's true. I wonder what happened that caused this surprising outcome. I have no way of knowing. <laughs> this is a matter that surpasses human comprehension. I don't really mind not knowing, though. The most important thing is that they're alive and well, even if they have lost their memories. Let's just celebrate that miracle. I like that you have to get the regular ending first before you can get this quote-unquote true ending. Funny how I platinumed the game and there wasn't a trophy for the true ending. Interesting. I gave a lot of my thoughts while I was playing, but I will say, I really did enjoy this as a really good sequel to the first game. I'm, you know, it took for frickin' ever, and of course, like, you know, they needed backers in order to make this game a reality. However, this game was beyond my expectations. I do think that it was a little unfortunate that it was that the departed was both of the girls because it was like okay is it one or the other and then it was like oh it's Michiho but then I was like wait then there was two spirits the fact that they were so against the doll like both of them were just like so against the doll and yet the doll did nothing but help me felt really like you know almost like like uh, giving up the ghost you know I mean it just felt weird to me personally I still enjoyed it um yeah um I never would have thought at the beginning that it would have been both of them and like seeing them and everything like I, I like that there is a true ending where like basically if you save Sakamoto you also get to save them so that's cool it does make it a little less thematic I will say because I like the thing at the end with him like fixing the doll and him being remorseful that he couldn't save them and the fact that like there was no way to save them throughout the entire game was different but apparently their souls were inside the doll doesn't explain how they got their bodies back though which is a little weird but I'm not upset I am a sucker for a happy ending so because I, I love a happy ending, I thought that it did just fine. It wasn't the best. Definitely not like one of the best horror games I've ever played, but as far as visual novels go, damn. It was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. It was really good. And now we're probably going to get like one more like little epilogue here at the end to see what happened to like, you know, everyone afterwards. So... We'll uh, get to that next. I'll be back in a sec. Oh, a few weeks have passed since that night, but I'm not at the school. I'm at my office. Hello? It's me, Shuji Daimon. How are you feeling, Yashiki? Uh, that should be my line. Are you still in K Hospital? No, I was discharged two days ago. I've uh, mostly recovered. Mr. Conaway told me some stuff. I thought you might be curious to hear what he had to say, so I wanted to phone you up and share it with you. Darren proceeds to tell me what happened at Konoe Hara after the case. Even though the departed is now gone, that didn't change the fact that four students went missing in uh, such a short time. Mr. Kono will resign from his position to take responsibility for the disappearances. Yeah, not that different from the regular ending. It's a shame since it wasn't really his fault, but he does seem to have regrets. 
Oh, he doesn't seem to have any regrets. Diamond was also given the first headmaster's journal uh, that a relative of Mr. Cornaway found at their home. Said there were some interesting things written in it, so he'd bring it by sometime. And about Doryu and Kinokawa. In the end, the police didn't pursue the case for the wishes of their parents and the school. They've been resting and recuperating in the dorm. They're doing quite well. They've also been speaking to a counselor, though we haven't seen any particularly unusual behavior. Now well, that's a relief. What about the two months of memory they lost? They've been diagnosed with memory impairment. They don't remember either of us. Well, that's for the best. If they remember us, that'll only rebuild connections to the departed. Everything's good as long as they're alive. I understand that feeling now. If only you were a doctor. Time on. Two souls who should have been claimed were saved. As a spirit doctor, you should be proud of your work. Thanks. I'll come visit you soon. I still need to hand off the journal. Let's have some drinks. Invite Hiro and Mashita as well. Catch you later, Yashiki. Oh, I like that it is, like, noticeably different from the regular ending. Hmm, knowing those two are safe and sound is more than enough for me. I simply hope they're able to enjoy the normal mundane life they led before the departed shattered their worlds. Oh. They're showing up at my place at this time of night. My computer training with Eta is tomorrow, if I remember correctly. Is it Daimon already? Hey, I, I love that shot. I open the front door. Oh. Oh, they're here. Ichio and Dory were standing in front of me. How is that possible? Also, now I am concerned. Sorry for visiting you this late. You're Yashiki, right? Thank you for saving us the other day. Oh, yeah, what brings you here? There's something I want to ask you. It's about our lost memories. Memories? We heard some things from our friends in the dorm. They said Michiho and I were helping you out a lot recently. Is it true? We have no idea since we lost our memory. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. Would you mind telling us what happened during that time? That's... To tell the truth, lately there have been these strange uh, feeling lingering in the back of our minds. We wanted to figure out what it was since we think it has something to do with our memory loss. Strange feeling. Yeah, like... I've always been into frogs, but out of nowhere I've come to love bugs. And that's weird. Michio touches her butterfly earring when she says that. Definitely something caused by the rhythms of the departed. So our fears were true, it seems. Well... What are you gonna do if you regain your memory? Well, if learning those missing memories aren't as blissful as you think. Still... We still want them back. I knew it. I can't betray my emotions, but internally, I'm smiling wryly. Five months ago, I also went in search of memories that I had lost. I understand their need to know more than they realize. But, I can't support their efforts. That's what's best for them and everyone else. Sorry, but there's nothing I can share with you. Besides, doesn't your dorm have a curfew? You better go home. We break curfew all the time. It doesn't bother us. And... I also broke the curfew when we were inspecting the M-Town shop. Huh? What? What am I saying? Inspecting the M-Town shop? That's a memory from when the departed commandeered their bodies, slowly resurfacing as they speak with me. This is the worst case scenario. I can't afford to waste any time with politeness. 
I don't feel like talking anymore. Go home, Kinokawa, adore you. Wait a minute, I feel like I remember something. No, get out of here now! But... Just let it go, Michiho! Huh? Oh shit, tensions got high in that moment, I let something slip. Did you just call me Michiho? <laughs> Kinokawa? It's not how you speak to me. Call me Michiho. Didn't you promise me that, Mr. Yashiki? Don't tell me. Yes, I remembered everything now. I turned into the departed, didn't I? What in the world are you talking about, Michio? Not just me, but Hime as well. Come on, you remember it too, Hime. The love we had when we were the departed. Love. Aw, oh, nuts! This is bad. Or you? No way! Was I the departed? I remember everything, even when we went to the clock tower together. No way! Can't believe how easy they regain their memories as the departed. Defeated and crestfallen, and accept that there is nothing more that can be done. It's too late for regrets. That being said, the best way forward now is to support them and try to steer them toward the right path. And the girls quietly drink the coffee I brewed for them. It's your second time making us coffee, huh? Fruit coffee really is much better than the instant ones. It's really delicious, Mr. Yashiki. You don't have to call me that anymore. I'm not your teacher anymore. It's a habit I can't seem to shake, even if I was doing it while I was controlled by the departed. Same. I seem a lot more relaxed now. I certainly have an amazing ability to adapt to what life throws at them. Seeing how Michio just accepted she was suddenly a bug lover. Guess they must have prepared themselves to roll with whatever they learn after regaining their memories. Now, Doryu, Michio. There's a few things I'd like to ask you, do you mind? Sure, go ahead. Probably curious about a few things we can answer, right? Just ask away, don't hesitate. We also want to know about the Departed's memories. We won't have peace of mind unless we do. Mm, let's ask about their health first. How are you two feeling? Same as usual. If anything, I feel much more refreshed now. It's like that fog in my head is cleared up. I'm worried about this white hair, though. It stands out way too much. You can see it? Yep, same with the mark on Hime's face. I guess it's supposed to be the Departed's mark or something? Yeah. Just piecing things together. The Mayumura sisters had bruises resembling the mold all over their bodies, and their hair lost its color as they became more corpse-like. The mark on the hair must have originated from the pitiful demise of the two sisters. Damn, this sucks. I hope my hair will go back to normal. Stop complaining, Michiho. It's already a miracle we're still even alive. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Ask about the Departed's memories. How much of the Departed's memories can you recall? Not everything. I guess we pretty much remember most uh, the most unforgettable moments. So, do you still have their painful memories? Yes. But we don't feel any negative emotions from them because you saved their souls. The painful stuff they experienced in the past just feels like a story or movie now. 
I heave a sigh of relief. If the loathing the brides felt during the wedding ceremony somehow remained in both of them, the Sekis would have been crushed under that weight. Except for the painful memories, I still pretty much remember how I felt about some stuff. Like how I love bugs and the departed's love for you. Michiho! <laughs> no point in hiding it anymore, Hime. It's not like we can do anything about it. Because this feeling belongs to the departed. You have a point. Hmm. Ask how their memories are turned. That's a good question. You know, uh, this is all thanks to the departed. I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean there. You saved the departed souls. During their final moments, they gave us our bodies back. Oh, okay. Why, though? That's something I learned from the departed's memories. It's a pretty strong feeling. They were grateful to you, and they wanted you to know it. Like, they really, really wanted you to know it. Oh, God! The departed felt grateful to me? You might find this suspicious, but... Do you know why we were able to get our lives back? It's because the departed was completely smitten with you. At least, and that's what I believe. Love created a true miracle. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about all this. Yeah, especially because I am an adult! Guess it means that all the struggles I had to go through to act as their husband was worth it in the end. By the time I finish asking all my questions, it's gotten pretty late. Thank you so much for listening to us, Mr. Yashiki. And for the coffee as well. I truly enjoy the rich smell now, as well as the complex bitter notes uh, layered behind the creaminess and sweetness. Such a refined, acquired taste. I'll get you back to your dorm. It's already late. I'll try to talk to your dorm manager about breaking the curfew as well. No need to mind that. Of course we have to. Duh. Thank you very much, Mr. Yashiki. I'm sorry for everything. I have no idea how those memories are going to affect you. So if you start feeling strange or weird, you make sure to contact me. Got it? Understood. I might come here if I have no business, though. I want to drink your delicious coffee. Oh, jeez. Both Michiho and Doryu were saved. It remains unknown why the Departed saved them both, though. Although they said the Departed was grateful to me, I doubt that. This is just a hunch, but... The Departed might have entrusted both their memories and love to these two girls. The dead do not only leave behind resentment, there are also times when their hopes and dreams linger on as well. Even if it was something that a party decided on a whim, it doesn't change the fact that these two girls are alive and breathing. Somehow, my actions were able to save lives that were impossible to save. Spirit Doctor who saves both the living and the dead. <laughs> if I can be the light for those who are trapped in the darkness. Then I will be the Spirit Doctor. And I will reach out my hand to them.
And with that, my friends, we have finished the main story of Deathmark 2. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I appreciate you being here with me. We do have extra content. It's like an extra little chapter thing. I don't know how long it is. I'm going to try and do it in a single episode, but eh, we'll see how long it ends up being. But either way, thank you, everyone, so much for joining me. This has been so awesome, so much fun, and I hope that the Spirit Hunter series continues on either with Yashiki or possibly with other people. That would be cool, too. I also, like, I, I wouldn't mind if what they did was, like, for example, like, you know, the first game was Yashiki, the second game was a completely separate thing. Now, this game was Deathmark 2, and now we have, like, another game after this that's, like, its own thing, and then we go back to Yashiki. I wouldn't mind if, like, intermittently he came up, and, like, that would be just really fucking cool. I would love it. But either way, I'm looking forward to doing that extra content. So, until then... You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe it if you're not already. Ring the bell for all them notifications is. And until next time, have yourselves a beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful viewers. Hey there. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider subscribing to my Patreon so I can keep making awesome videos like the one you just saw. The link will be in the description below. And as always, have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day.